One, two, one, two, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. Okay, guys, welcome to the Forensics Detailing channel. Hit the subscribe button. Now, we've had some products sent to us by Detailing Giants Auto Glim. These have been sent to me very kindly, free of charge, so that can make the review bias, but our aim is to try and critique these, you know, talk about positives as well as negatives and all the interesting stuff. So let's have a go at doing that. What is this, guys? Okay, so this is an advanced wheel cleaner, all wheel cleaner, in fact. Color changing, pH neutral formula for all lacquered wheel finishes. Some of this is very important, or well, relatively important <laughs> within the context of wheel cleaning. Color changing technology. First of all, that means it contains the stuff that makes brake dust or rust on within brake dust. Um, it turns that rust into a purple oxide, which it can then dissolve in water at the point that the reaction occurs, something like that. Uh, iron theiglochylic the oxide is the oxide that's formed. Um, so it doesn't dissolve iron, it dissolves the rust on iron. Why is that relevant to brake? Um, why is that relevant to wheel cleaning? Because the brake pads in most standard cars, non-ceramic brake pads, contain a mixture of components, resins, um, uh, and some steel, you know, in that, in that mixture, in that composition. Um, and of course, steel on the um, brake discs as well that gets um, abraded off. So you get a slurry of, of dust in your um, wheel and also um, road grime in there. Um, and that slurry contains a lot of ferrous components which rust. Okay, so about 10 or 15 years ago, something like that, we started seeing reactive uh, fallout removers introduced into the detailing scene. Now, very popular, because when they clean, they turn purple. And that is a little bit of a party trick, isn't it? It's a party trick, it's a very powerful party trick. So after the um, je ne sais quoi, after the party trick came out, all of the detailing product uh, brands went and released um, fallout removers. So we could get, to, you know, they, these came out of the Far East as well. It was a Far Eastern brand that I think decided to try this. Uh, and we often think, we often think of the Far East as copying all of the, the Western ideas. Well, they come up with this using this in cars, as far as I know. Uh, and it's gone all around the world. So there wasn't any entente cordiale with this or like, well, it's their idea. No, it's gone everywhere and everyone's got this. A bit like ceramic detail sprays. Anyway, there's a bit of stuff that you might find interesting. I find it interesting. Now let's talk about price. This uh, all wheel clean cleaner is available in a one litre spray bottle. You, you can see in this little picture here that these guys have sent me. So your standard going to Halfords, buy a little litre of ready to go, um, wheel cleaner, which is great. You do plough through this. You do plough through this. And Auto Glim, I was chatting to Auto Glim, they did some market research, which is kind of cool, which is basically just watching how many squirts of a trigger people use to clean a wheel. And they were counting, it does depend on the trigger, so I assume this is their own, their own triggers. They were counting roughly an average of about 50 squirts per alloy wheel. So in other words, you're going, all in the arches, all around the barrels, all in there. And by the time you've finished squirting, you've done 50. But they also counted up to 90 squirts per alloy wheel, uh, which is quite interesting. Now, now let's get really, really kind of, let's up the level of dork. Most of these chambers, I think, squirt out about 1.4 mil of product. So if you're doing 90 squirts, oh Jesus, nine times 140, well, let's just say 10 times 140. Um, so, oh geez. <laughs> you're using a lot of product. I think you'd end up, if you're using 90 squirts, you'd go for about half a litre, wouldn't you, to do four wheels? You tell me in the comments, you'd go through and do the maths. Something like that. So the point is with buying these bottles, you go through them very, very quickly. Now, you've got, you've got two, now Auto Glim predominantly with their consumer line, they sell two, um, the consumer mass market. And some of that mass market doesn't really care about detailing. They're just guys that go into Halfords. They've got dirty wheels. So they walk down the detailing aisle and look for something 
to clean their wheels with. So Autoglim need an offering for that. And fair enough, you know, an Alita offering a wheel cleaner is okay. Nothing too wrong with that. But I think then you get your smart, your smart, your smart guys. So your, there's another word I was going to tag on the end of that. That like to go and stock five liters of it. It is your prosumer, isn't it? Your prosumer that realizes if they buy five liters, it lasts them years. It doesn't go off and all that. And looks for buying a little bit more and getting a little bit more bulk. And normally auto glim, and that, that could be the detailing scene market, if you like, who are less afraid to go and buy five litres of wheel cleaner. Um, so I think auto glim here, by offering this two and a half litre thing, and you'll be able to get that in Halfords as well, I think. Um, and they're selling this pump sprayer now as well. I think specifically it's been released with this. I think they're kind of, they've got one eye on the sort of detailing scene type of user. And then the extreme end is the, um, obviously the professional detailer and they've got their professional line for all that where you can buy like 25 litres or five litres and you know, all that sort of stuff. The auto glim franchisee kind of stuff. But guys at home haven't got access to that. So I think this is 2.5 litres. It's a good halfway house between the, um, the guy that doesn't really care about detailing, he just wants a wheel cleaner and grabs anything. And the guys that are really into their detailing. So I think that's quite clever, actually. Um, I think it's quite clever. I think if you just offered two and a half litres, you'd scare off all of that mass market that just go in that want to grab something that's going to sit on their shelves, which is probably the big market. Right, let's just talk about price. The two and a half litres is $29.99. Okay, remember this is a fallout remover, not just it's not just a detergent. So... If we talk about full route removers, the cheapest I think I've ever seen is when Car Chem do a deal and you can get five litres for about fourteen ninety nine or something. So that's twice, you know, so that's about £7.50 for two and a half litres. But it's slightly cheating because you're getting more, so it's, it's not a fair conversion. But it gives you an idea anyway, doesn't it? Um, and Built Hamber, the one that won my um, full out remover test that I did about, well, about three or four, maybe five years ago, it's about 50 to 55 pounds a litre. I haven't gone and Googled it. Probably closer to 55 nowadays, so five litres. Uh, so if you halve that, you're close to kind of that price. So as always with Autoglim, I think they probably do a fair amount of market research. They're usually somewhere in the middle with their pricing. Um, never ridiculously cheap, never ridiculously expensive, but somewhere in between. The Liberal Democrats. <laughs> The Liberal Democrats of the detailing world. They never go to the left or the right, merely somewhere in between. Anyway, stop, don't talk about politics, don't do humour. Now let's move on to, we're doing this, we do this all in one take as well, don't we? It's <laughs> horribly wrong. Now let's move on to how you use reactive fallout removers. This thing has a sprayer, this pump, pump thing, and a foamer. Uh, that's quite a good option actually. Uh, does it matter? I think the foam will give you a bit more user experience. Whenever you use these pump sprayers and you've finished, release the pressure off them so you don't damage it. You don't want to leave it all that pressure stuck in, stuck into this thing. Okay. Right, let's make sure we shake that. Right, we do a bit of Taylor Swifting on this. Shake it up, shake it up. <laughs> Terrible joke. Terrible. Mm, hold on. All right. Jesus. God, you need a bit of torque in your fingers to get that off. Okay, right. Now, oh, yeah. <laughs> now, let's just stop a second. One thing I haven't talked about. Um, these products, these fallout removers, they stink. So the active ingredient, this sodium thioglycolic um, acid, um, sodium, yeah, sodium thioglycolic acid that's mixed in with these detergents is that sulfurousy, eggy, stinky smell. Autoglim released their first fallout remover many years ago, well not many years ago, two or three years ago, and it was low, low, low smelling. It was low odour. I don't know if that's low odour or not, but it doesn't smell very pleasant. None of them do. Okay. You, it also has a little pink tinge to it, which is quite a good sign. This, to me, looks very thick, very gel-like, which is interesting. That might. Let's just have a look at what their blurb says. 
or it clings to your wheel, increasing contact time. So maybe that's that gel-like stuff. Yeah, we know all that. This is interesting as well, guys. Suitable for regular lacquered, painted, diamond cut, anodized, plastic wheel trims. If you have any different wheel type, use our custom wheel cleaner instead. I'd, I'd like them to state specifically what other wheel types it's not suitable on. And what's springing to mind there is bare metal, because sometimes these can stain. If the surface is, isn't, like a lacquer is a good surface, but if it's like a porous surface and these dry, they can embed. So sometimes as well on satin finish and stuff like that, you do want to be careful, especially a black satin finish, but it does, it's, it should be all right on those, but I have seen problems, not with Autoglim products, but with fallout removers in general on satin finish. So yeah, I don't know, it says it's okay though. Um, but let's fill this up. Do not spill this because it stinks. Ay, oh, ay, ay. Oh, that smell. Well, I'm gonna go about halfway. That will give me an optimum amount. I just let me just get all the lid on this thing so so I'm not gonna to choke to death. Sorry about the camera work. Okay. In and on. And one oh. Whoa! Nearly, nearly lost my camera then. Look at that. <laughs> How the hell did I become a YouTuber? Um so this is interesting. How many times do we need to pump this thing? If you're pumping it till the point where that, that just starts popping up, you're at max pumpage. So let's go with that. Cool, that. When you start to feel a bit of resistance, you know you're nearly there. That's probably enough. Who knows, who knows? One thing I'll say with these, these pumpy things, they're great for like YouTube videos. Yes, I now have enough pumpage in there to probably, you know, put enough fluid over the uh, cleaning solution over the wheel. So that's gonna save me the old twig, twigger, trigger squirting. <laughs> but they are a bit of a pain, these things, in my opinion. But there you go. Um, so you can see here, I have a really dirty alloy wheel. Uh, it's really bad, you know, but it's, you know, it's just that sort of normal dirt. It's dirty. <laughs> Here we've got a bucket full of random brushes and just water. Now, the instructions for this say to spray this on dry and then let it dwell for about two to four minutes. Make sure you don't put it on hot, you know, a hot car where the brakes are all hot and you've just driven it or whatever, because that will dry the product out. Um, so it says go on dry. Now, normally, here's the thing, right? When you spray this um, product on, the sodium thiolic oxide is gonna react with all of the embedded iron that is in that, okay? There's loads of brake dust in there, and that whole wheel is gonna go purple. And that, people get really excited about that. Um, but, most of this, you can see, just comes off with a swipe of the finger. So it's not stuck onto the um, surface. It's not dug in, you know, it's, it'll come off easily. So you can just pre-wash your car first with snow foam and um, rinse it, you know, pressure wash it. You'll get most of that loose dirt off. And then the reaction part of this product, the sodium thioglycolic oxide, is then used on the stuff which isn't easily removed. So stuff which needs dislodging, you know. So you can argue that to use this more efficiently, you should um, do that, you know, always do that first rinse. Um, you can counter argue that and say, uh, if it's all wet in there, then this product can't get to all the stuck on stuff as much. But then, you know, there's two, there's two ways of doing it. How I would do it is I would always typically pre-wash and jet wash off first, because that's just what I do. Um, but anyway, I'm following the instructions. Does it matter? Well, the other side of just spraying this on to all of this dirty wheel is that there is more abrasive brake dust there for you to shift around and sort of, you know, abrade on the paint. Whereas if it's 90% clean from a pressure wash, there's less sort of shifting dirt up and down against the paintwork. So it depends on your standards, guys. Now here's something that's important. 
This alloy wheel is not great. The surface is all right, but inside it's all bubbled where the paint's failing. So I'm not really too precious about how I clean this alloy wheel. With the Golf, I'm not really too precious about it. But if it was a brand new Porsche with an immaculate you know, finish on it, it was just mint, then you want to nail down and get your process right. You know, do what's best for not damaging the alloy wheel. But you've also got to do this reasonably quickly. So we're, we're going into massive detail about things here that you probably may or may not find interesting. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just see, we pumped the hell out of this, so it should stay pressurized. We'll put this on now and leave it for two to three, uh, yeah, probably, we just don't want it to dry. Here's another thing as well, I'm full of information. If this does dry, what happens is the reaction, so for the, the, the iron, the FeO2 brake dust, which turns to iron thei glycolic oxide with the reaction, then dissolves in water, when the water dries, it dissolves back, the reaction reverses and it goes back to FeO2. So sometimes you'll be using these and they'll work really well, but it will dry and then you'll see a gold film over all the alloy. Like that, that's not a gold film, that's the paint. <laughs> so it can be hard to spot on this alloy. If ever you see that gold film, it's, it's reversed back to rust because you've allowed it to dry. Just put some more fallout remover on it and it will just bang, it'll instantly dissolve that. Um, rust film back to, to um, purple again. So there's a little tip for you, but don't let them dry. Right, let's go on now. So we've been talking for a long time. Let's see how this sprayer thing works. Right, can you see? Oh, it's not, oh, okay, it's not a foamer then. I thought it was a foaming head. Well, it's pretty decent. So maybe it's just a fan head. It did, it did say sprayer and not foamer. So we've used quite a lot of product there. When you're using that sprayer, it's very difficult to kind of, because it fans out, it's difficult not to get this product onto the brake discs. Uh, again, here's another piece of useful information for you. Um, if you can, you should avoid spraying it onto the brake discs. It's, you're gonna get some on there, it's not the end of the world. The reason being is those steel discs get a surface layer of rust over the top of them. You know, you'll see that. Um, and when you dissolve that, it's it's no, not a major thing, but it, you can get some pitting in the brake discs. I've seen it, and I've in, spoken to a few companies that make detailing products that advise not to spray these onto brake discs for that reason. Don't spray them onto your pads. Um, and you know, if you're gonna spray them onto the calipers, just the metal bits, so maybe just spray it into your brush and work the brush in there if you're really thorough. Don't worry too much about that. But the extreme thing not to do is if you ever take the wheel off, you don't spray your brake discs with this stuff and watch your brake discs turn purples because you're going to do a decontamination on them. No, don't do that. Okay. Um, so we're still in time here. We'll give it about another minute. What we're looking for is the purple reaction. In fact, we want to see that purple reaction, don't we? Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's happening. So let's just look at that. This is the impressive bit. Oh, that smell. <laughs> oh. It is not, I, I do have to say guys, one thing I'm really impressed with is that I put quite a lot of chemical on just to make sure it goes everywhere, you know. There's no chemical on my garage floor at the moment. Normally a lot of that would have run off. So that really is thick and that really is stiff, if you pardon the pun. And it is quite nice to spray it out with just a little squirt of the uh, hand rather than pumping away 90 times. You know, that'll build up 90 squirts with your wrist that will build up massive strength in your arms. But luckily for me, I've already got massive strength in one of my arms. <laughs> Don't do humor. Um, right, this isn't, it, this isn't in any danger of drying at the moment. So I'm just gonna let the reaction carry on going. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the bottle <laughs> and get my thumbnail clip. This is, look, I mean, I mean the only the YouTuber lazy enough to get a thumbnail clip while he's actually doing the video. <laughs> so if we put the bottle there, shut that thing there, we'll get the Auto Glim logo in the front and we go there. Look at that. And then what I can do is go right down here and then I'll get a screenshot of that later on. Make sure we come back a little bit. We can even do the really low pan. They look good. There we go. 
Yeah, I like that. Okay. So let's agitate this now, guys. We've got that thick, look at that reaction. Look at that. Oh yeah. And then we'll go. Now, normally, you know, you can go around with this one on the uh, inside. I haven't really put any chemicals in the arch. So we'll just do, we'll just do the wheel. This is a little mini EZ brush, which I think is fantastic. Half the battle is just finding the right brush for your type of alloy, isn't it? And this little mini one I know is good for this. This. And while you're going in and out, you want to get all those little edges as well. And yes, I am going a little bit slow here. I've got a camera in one hand. I'm watching myself, I'm watching myself clean the alloy wheel through the lens of the camera. What I like so far is um, when, I, I've, when I go into work this, it's busting out in foam and the foam is all nice and dirty. You know, it goes, gets all the dirt in it and you get all that darkness. I think you know that this is doing quite a good job. Uh, another subject that's really important, guys. What should you use to clean your wheels? Well, you see the difference in colour there as I'm going through. It's really cleaning it. Um, well, if you're, you've got those mint alloys that we talked about, you've got a brand new Porsche, it's got mint alloys on it. If you clean your car every single week, you don't need to use strong chemicals. You could use the Auto Glim, you know, Trade Shampoo or the Auto Glim APC or whatever, you know. Um, and as long as you're doing it regularly and not letting all this brake dust build up, you might even have carbon ceramic brakes, which are so much better. Um, if you have carbon, this is an important point, if you have carbon ceramic brakes, um, these fallout removers are generally overkill because you don't have all of the um, ferrous component in the brake pad. So you don't get any purple reaction going on. So, you know, they're not, I wouldn't use them on carbon ceramics, basically. I didn't I, on my M4, but my M4's gone now. Okay, so let's keep going with this. What else was I saying? So yeah, if you keep your alloys mint and you keep doing your regular clean every week on a mint set of alloys, you could use shampoo and use softer brushes and microfiber brushes and wash pads and all this sort of stuff and it would be quite a gentle experience. If you have, however, let's just pan this out so you can see it all. If you have, donk, if you're going to clean a car that has really dirty um, alloy wheels, then, but not dev not ridiculously dirty, you know, they've just not been cleaned for a couple of months, but like this, for example, then these are brilliant, okay? They're sort of like a halfway house between using a mild product and an acid, you know, and in some ways you get the benefits of the milder side because it's not dangerous, you know, it's not corrosive, it's not gonna attack the clear coat binders or anything. Um, or the finish. It's not going to um, corrode bare calipers. It's not going to promote ox um, Well, it does promote a little bit of rust, you know, a little bit of browning on the brake disc. But it's not going to. It's not corrosive as such. It's just the reverse reaction that causes that. So it's kind of like a halfway house, and you get the best of both worlds. That's the advantage of it. It, was, it is a very effective wheel cleaner. There's a thing going around saying that fallout removers are not wheel cleaners. I don't understand what that's all about. Fallout removers are great at dislodging bedded on um, ferrous components and you get most of that in the wheel. So it does, they do make good wheel cleaners. The downside is this product or the, the fallout remover is generally an expensive thing compared to you know, mixing down your own APC and that sort of stuff. So that's the downside, but they are very good wheel cleaners. How do I know that? When you go and use them like this, and you go through, and you, that still doesn't give you a license to not do your scrubbing, and you still got to go and bust some calories, or bust something, um, but it just seems to really do a thorough job of cleaning, and you always get good results. Um, you know, and you, you don't, if you just clean this quickly with a shampoo, you'd see all the little bits are stuck on, that you've missed, or, you haven't scrubbed it hard enough and you've got to go back in there again, you know. Now, the other alternative that we talked about is using an acid wheel cleaner. 
an acid, if you're going to use an acid, it's almost best if you can take the alloy wheel off and just use the acid on all of that, get behind it, the spokes as well, and get in the barrel where it's all embedded and the acid can really come into its own and all these little bits here where it's stuck on. An acid works in a similar way to a fallout remover in, in the sense that it shrinks solid particles. So it shrinks any stuck on contamination. If an alloy wheel hasn't been cleaned for years, then an acid can be really, really good. Be very careful with acids. You get them on your hands, you get little sort of like burns sometimes, depends how strong it is. You know, they're not skin safe. Um, they're corrosive to metal, so bare calipers, if you let them dry or the calipers are warm, your calipers can go yellow, you know, with like oxidisation. Um, and if you used acid every single time, every week, a strong acid on this alloy wheel, I think you'll, over time, probably damage the clear coat as well, because it does attack the binders. Um, so yeah, an acid is something you want to use once in a blue moon on a wheel that is just ridiculously horrible to clean. Um, I've got I've got a little pot of Wonder Wheels in the cupboard over there, and it's a really strong acid, and it's quite good. You know, I'm sure they all kind of they all work, but that's it's it's a strong acid, and if ever I need to use it, it's in there. But I try not to use it. So there, I think so far we've talked about virtually everything you need to know about wheel cleaning. Is wheel cleaning a dark art? No, it isn't. Um, do you need to be overly worried about scratching on alloy wheels? Well, alloy, wheel, alloy wheels tend to get decimated. Ow, it should be gloved up. Um, I'm using the camera. They tend to get decimated no matter what happens, but it's impossible for a proper petrol head and detailing enthusiast not to have that anxiety when you've got a mint set of like really nice alloys um, you know and you just want to feel like you're doing the right thing don't you so it's all down to you you do not need any other information beyond what I've given you in this video this product by the way I like it I like the fact it hasn't dried it's still wet I like the fact it's foamy there is nothing I don't like about this. Um, would I need to use this every single week? No, typically with fallout removers, I'd get this under control, I'd get this clean, I'd get this wheel off, I'd do all the caliper properly, I'd do all the suspension components, get in there with little brushes and get it all really clean. And then hopefully once a week, just keep on top of it with like an APC or even a shampoo or a pre-wash or whatever. But you can see how, look, I mean, look at it. You can see how it's really made cleaning this alloy pretty easy. You can get this on the rubber as well. The rubber is embedded in fallout, so you often see that turn purple if you put it on clean, but it's got detergent in there so you can clean the rubber with it. And it's still wet and it's still working. Yeah, I think it's a good product, this. There will always be, if something's this dirty, bits that you miss. And you can never have enough brushes, so I could get a little hog's hair and go in here, into those little lug nuts areas. But I think, if I've washed this off now, guys, you get the idea. I'm sure there's some bits, bits on there that I've missed. Sometimes a little soft mitt can be quite good. But we'll rinse this off with low pressure, which means it's not going to do much cleaning on itself but it'll give you an idea yeah I mean the barrel barrel is still on this needs a bit more work oh, I haven't really done I'll tell you what I've done a poor job on the caliper um, yeah the caliper so I just probably need a little soft brush look there's loads there so let's just go and get that little soft hogs hair that's the stubby brush that's an important brush as well auto glimmer got one of those and they're good they're good when you've got it really when it's really caked on so yeah these alloys are not the best for getting out the caliper but because there's so many spokes they sort of hide your view of the brake disc a little bit more than some other alloys 
which means you can get away with them being not so great. These hubs always tend to have, they have matte, cheap matte paint on them and the corrosion gets through and it gets embedded in that matte paint. You can, once it starts corroding, it's a lost cause. Um, so if you get a brand new caliper and it's got matte paint on it, I paint over the top of that matte paint, because it's usually a primer anyway, and put like a satin finish, heat proof, or heat resistant paint on it. So this reaction is still going, look. So you'd, you'd probably also really want to rinse this with a pressure washer to, to make sure you get all of that fallout remover out of there, or you're still, you'll still carry on getting that bleed. Is that a little bit of curb in there? Oh, it is. Look, I never noticed that. A tiny bit of curb in there. It might, I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> These need a refurb anyway. So I think, oh, there's little bits I've missed. Seeing them there, look, probably missed, didn't get in there. Yeah, you've got to be so careful, haven't you? Anyway, I'm just chatting. So I'll tell you what I think about this. If I went into Halfords and I was looking for a wheel cleaner, I would be looking for the most, of, or a reactive wheel cleaner, I'd be looking for the most I could get. And that, I would buy that before anything else. You know, because all the other offerings in there on the premium section, you know, are going to be one litre, you know, including auto glims. So that will save me a little bit of money. The product's great. The product's great. What do people say about auto glim? Some people on the detailing scene vine don't like auto glim. Auto glim have been around longer than the detailing scene. So before before people were interested in detailing, like go back 70 odd years or whenever they started, these guys were, were sort of like playing around with all this stuff, making waxes, making chemicals to clean your car and do all this stuff before anyone else was interested in it. So they are part of the history of automotive kind of um, detailing and they've got some really good products, some really good products in fact. This super resin polish is still a great product for a guy at home that just wants to polish his car by hand or, or by a little, little jewel action. Doesn't want all this, you know, eight drawers of paint correction tools and like 500 quids of pads. You just want to polish it, shine it up, get a wax on it. Um, things like that are really good and they were sort of like the pioneers of those types of products. That ultra high definition wax for me is still one of the highest quality Get out there. Highest quality, my hands are really dirty. I don't like getting my wax pot dirty. It's one of the highest quality poured waxes that I've seen. So well, such a nice wax that is. Does everything, cures nicely, gets a proper dry cure, beads, very high quality thing. Um, so I keep that wax. Yeah, um, a lot of it, so, some people don't think auto glimmer like trendy because all of these detailing scene brands have come along and some of those detailing scene brands do have you know they get, they get to the chase or they get to the what's the word they they'll release a product years before auto glim so there's lots of innovation within the detailing scene that's why it's cool to kind of follow it that's the strength of the detailing scene but um yeah, some people think auto glim are not trendy, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And also some professional detailing detailers think their consumer line isn't aggressive enough. And here's the thing with auto glim is they actually have staff, you know, they've got like four or five at least chemists, they've got a big lab. They make all their own stuff and everything they make, they test and qualify potentially for years to make sure it doesn't damage your car and that sometimes means excluding excluding the use of certain chemicals that that trade products will use because they'll make doing the job a little bit faster potentially but they also risk there's risks with those chemicals and because autoglim primarily are selling to the mass market you cannot really have any risk so the way to think of autoglim products is they are built to be idiot proof. That doesn't mean you're an idiot if you don't, if you don't, if you're not into detailing. It means that they are servicing a huge market 
of people that are not obsessed by detailing. This product is very good. Um, so there, you've seen it in action. My wheels are really clean and you can actually see the copper. That's a copper painted finish. It actually looks like copper. Now it's bronze, isn't it? I don't know, whatever it is. But look, it looks completely different when it's dirty. So it gets a nice tinge to it. So pretty pleased with that, guys. So that is the Auto Glim Wheel Advanced All Wheel Cleaner. Thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you soon on the Forensics Detailing Channel. Doug.